Good morning. It's 10.30. Welcome. It's, uh, I want to offer a welcome to all those who have joined us here this morning, as well as those who are joining us online. It's uh, great to have you with us today. Um, you'll notice we're, we're missing someone today. Uh, we got a phone call yesterday. Someone's under the weather. So Silken won't be with us today, um, being wise and Staying home when you're, when you're not feeling well. So uh, we are going to be getting along without Silken's musical services today. Uh, we've, Louise, God bless her soul, took a lot of work and found uh, accompaniment music that uh, Gail has recorded over the last while um, for most of the songs. We're going to have to sing a cappella for at least one but I have confidence in all of you. <laughs> um, so, as we prepare for uh, this time of worship, let us start with a time of prayer. Holy Spirit, who kindled faith in our ancestors, rekindle that same sincere and powerful faith in us. Inspire us to worship you and to testify to you gladly and fearlessly, relying on your gift of grace. Amen. Let us now take a moment for uh, welcoming and sharing. So I've offered a welcome to all those who have joined us this, this morning. It's great to have you here. Um, sharing. 
as you can tell, we'll be uh, celebrating communion. And today is World Communion Sunday, so we are participating in communion with people throughout the world in sharing our faith. Joanne. Um, am I forgetting any enough? <laughs> Good morning. A couple announcements. Um, number one, of course, is the hymn sing coming up on October 26th. It will not be live streamed. We would love to have everybody here for that. So that's in the evening, October 26. Also, um, you may have noticed that Cave Springs Camp on October 30th from 1 until 3 p.m. is doing a fun run or walk. So um, there is all the information is on in bleh, bleh, online for that one. And the only other one is, and that's what I was trying to find, um, there is, has been, over the last year or so, a working group for inclusiveness of dementia, so a dementia-inclusive community. Um, my husband Don's been involved with it, and it's been really interesting. So uh, they, they are now called M-I-C-E, M -I -C -E, Memory Plus Inclusive Communities Everywhere. And their goal is to bring awareness um, of dementia and some of the challenges of dementias and the many different types, there's so many, um, as well as putting a face to it. So last Saturday was an event in Caledonia. They, have, they had a mural competition and there were three winners. First place went to a lovely artist from Caledonia area. Um, uh, eh. Wilson McKinty, Gina won um, second prize, and um, another woman from, I believe, Jarvis uh, shared second prize. They are now up on the medicine shop wall. If you're ever in Caledonia, you can see, um, and it's all about just bringing some awareness. And the last thing is, is on the 12th of October, there is a, there's um, also from the same group, um, a different chapter, a project called Faces of Dementia. And there will be an opening, a gallery opening at the Minga, October 12th. Look for, uh, it's on Facebook and we'll get more information for you. So um, there will be an opening, there will be uh, committee members there, just trying to, to get the message across that there are many ways we can make our communities more inclusive for those who are experiencing challenges with major neurocognitive disorders. And that's what we're trying to get through right now is how to make your community safer um, and easier. And I have to say, I remember when Pat Forsey um, was first struggling and a friend would bring her to the grocery store and to me the most perfect example of a dementia inclusive community was the fact that we all knew Pat, we all knew that she had some challenges, and we all made sure she got through that grocery store okay. And that just always made me um, feel really good about our community, and I think that's what Dunville uh, does. So more information on that coming. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, Roger reminded me this past week to take a look at the celebrations part of our website calendar. And I thought, oh, I better do that. So that's what I was just doing on my phone right now. And now I've put my phone on airplane mode so no one's going to interrupt me. One of my children has on occasion decided to text me during the, well, I was actually one time while I was uh, giving my sermon. So I got a reminder. Um, anyway, yes, um, happy anniversary to Hosan and Jahan, who are one of the uh, uh, refugee family couples that we, have, uh, we are sponsoring. It's their anniversary tomorrow. Um, didn't say which one, but it's their anniversary tomorrow. 
And also, I'm sorry, John and Donna Coverdale, it's uh, their anniversary on Tuesday. So, happy anniversary to Donna. Donna was here. Oh, sorry, sorry, Donna. <laughs> Apparently, my glasses are a little dirty. It's <laughs> All of a sudden, I can't see to the back of the sanctuary. Um, anyway, and we will have Sunday school today. Um, we're, so we're changing up the service a little bit so that uh, Melissa has some extra time with, with uh, the children downstairs. And then they will uh, be coming back up to join us for communion. So, wonderful. Are there any other announcements or things to share that I have forgotten or I'm not aware of? I'm going to take this awkward moment of silence to uh, assume there's nothing more. All right, let us uh, then join in our sanctus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks. The first verse as uh, we light our candles. And please stand if you are able. Thanks to the risen Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give thanks to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to God's name. It will light, right? Well, need a little more than help. <laughs> okay. I invite you to join with me in our opening prayer. We are not possible without you, God. We are the products of those who came before. We influence those who come after. You bind the generations to one another. We offer the treasures we find in you to one another, passing them down through the ages. Hear us as we worship you. Amen. And now let us join in our opening hymn, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, also known as Here I Am, Lord. And I think this is the one we're singing at a cappella, folks. So um, those who know it, don't be shy. <laughs> Um, and if you're looking for the words, and for, uh, it's on number 509 in Voices United. All right. I will get us started so everyone can follow along. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. I'll growl in deepest sin. My hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am. Oh. 
have wedged their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I Please be seated. We are naming this time for ch with children of all ages. All ages. So, I'm going to have a seat here, and if there's anyone, any child of any age, wants to come forward and join me, you are welcome to do so. I think there's a few people who are still a little shy. And that's okay. I, um, if you guys want to stay there, that's fine. I uh, just wanted to get a little chat here for a bit about what's next, what's happening next Sunday. And if you're back there and you want to contribute by saying something, feel free. What's next Sunday? Thanksgiving. Thank, uh, Thanksgiving, yeah. So the, Children of a slightly older age <laughs> are contributing. That's awesome. Um, what happens on Thanksgiving? Someone said turkey. Um, do we? Pardon? Pumpkin pie. Okay. Yeah. Gathering with family. Someone said give thanks. Do you guys give thanks? Yeah. How do you give thanks? Mm. Um. Do you say something? Yeah, you say something. Okay. <laughs> it's. I like to say thank you to people. I also like to think of other ways of saying, of, of letting people know I'm grateful or thank, or, or thankful. So. Are there other things you can do than saying thanks? Like what? Say happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's, if I'm really grateful that someone did something nice for me or was generous, I try and do the same for other people. Be generous and be kind. Um, so, yeah, it's one of the things, like we will celebrate it here too, is we're thankful. We try to be thankful to God for lots of things too, right? And all the wonderful things that God does for us. And when we do that, we also maybe, we know all the blessings that God has provided us with. That's a word that we use sometimes, blessings. A, the, the generous gifts that God has given us. We try and share those. 
so that we can be a blessing or a gift to other people that are around us. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So you guys were helping to hand them out. Did everybody here get a, a leaf? Yeah. Yes. So the idea there is if you come to church next Sunday, if you're still around or if you're if you haven't gone anywhere else. <laughs> I, was, I did not word that the way I intended. It's, if you come to you are able to come to church next Sunday. You haven't gone to another family member's home that next Sunday to celebrate Thanksgiving. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> Please bring that with you, ready, writing on it something that you're thankful for. And we're going to string things up so that we can sort of dem- show to everyone all the different things we're thankful for. If you are pretty sure you're going to be somewhere else next Sunday, if you have time today, fill it out with what you're grateful for and put it in the, uh, put it in the offering plate and we'll collect them so that we have them for next Sunday. I just want to be sure that everyone's got one. The other thing I just want, before, and I don't want to keep things too long for, for Melissa, is in today's scripture, we're going to be reading part of a letter that uh, it's believed Paul wrote to one of his students, a man named Timothy, who was leading a congregation, a church, somewhere else. And in that, Paul talks about our faith, you know, our belief in God, our trust that God is always with us. And he calls it a treasure, like a gift. It's not something that's a burden on us, it's a gift. Because that belief that God always loves us, our trust that God is always with us, always guiding us, always offering us strength, is a gift that helps us to be a gift and a blessing to other people that we can go forth with confidence that God is always with us so that we can help make the world a better place, a kinder place. And so for that, we can be very grateful. Let's take a quick moment for prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the faith you offer us and gift to us that we can Go out into the world and live amongst all, everyone confident of your love and your generosity and your strength so that we can be generous and we can be kind and we can be welcoming of all that we meet, of all those whom we meet, and that we can work with you to make the world more loving, more generous, and, and more kind. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all your patience. And uh, I think Melissa's got some stuff for you guys downstairs. Carolyn, that's you.
shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. If you know what sing, shout to the faith in technology. <laughs> Who have I got for uh, scripture? Dave? Tom? Okay. It's all yours. Hello. Okay. Why are we going to do this together? It's a letter from Timothy, for Timothy, from Paul. It's based on Timothy, the second, uh, chapter 1, verse one, <coughs> 1 to 14. The cell was dark and cold. Paul sat in the corner with a small oil lamp and a bit of papyrus. It was not easy to get parchment to write on, so he had spent the better part of the day thinking carefully about the letter that he would write to Timothy. Paul had been, in, been ill for some time now. Every day he grew a little more tired and weak. Serving Christ was a joy for Paul, but it was not easy to be a follower, and he, nor was, nor was, and now he was paying the price. He was locked in a, inside a cell, lonely and sick. Paul didn't know how much longer he could live this way. The last time he had try, tried to get word to Timothy, he had asked him to come and visit with him. He had so much he wanted to tell him, and he wanted to teach him, and writing was more difficult. He also wanted to hug Timothy to see his strong and happy face a last time. But there had been no word from him, and now Paul knew that with his time running short, he needed to write him one last inspired letter. After much praying and thinking, he was ready to begin. Paul coughed, massaged the cold, stiff hands above the oil lamp, and dipped his sharpened reed into a thick black ink, and then he began. I, Paul, a teacher for Christ by the will of God, write to my beloved Timothy. I wish you grace, mercy, and peace. Every night, just before I go to sleep, I pray. And as I pray, I think of you and how grateful I am for you. I think of your sincere faith, a faith that has been passed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice and now lives in you. I long to see you to explain this in person but this letter will have to serve. Do you remember that feeling when we prayed together and I laid my hand on your shoulder? That feeling of deep faith and wonder? I want you to remember it always and continue to rekindle that feeling. 
God didn't give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. <clears throat> Don't be ashamed of these feelings or the fact that I, who share them, am in prison. We have both been called by the grace of God to spread the word of Jesus the Christ. Yes, it is because I answered this call that I am now in prison and suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. I put my trust in God, serve the best I can, and teach all who are willing to hear. I have taught you, Timothy. I have given you the teachings that have been entrusted to me by God, and now they are yours as well. Hold to them and share them in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this treasure well, Timothy, and share it with all who are ready to accept the gift. Paul straightened up as a teardrop fell and blurred a bit of this last sentence. He had so much more to say, but it would have to wait. It was late, and Paul was tired. He turned down the wick of the lamp and closed his eyes, praying to God and remembering warmly his dear young friend, Timothy. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Marnie. Thank you, Carolyn. I very much appreciate all of your contributions and uh, your perseverance in continuing on even uh, through the uh, challenges of, uh, of our modern technology. I very much appreciated and, and admired. As I, as I listened to, to what Dave and Marnie read, I um, thought I'd add a little bit. This is, this is Warner offering a small history lesson um, off the cuff. Uh, the image in that story of, of Paul sitting and, and writing out this letter to Timothy is, is a lovely image, but it's probably not accurate um, because... In general, it is uh, presumed and accepted scholarship that Paul dictated his letters to a scribe. That's one, of the, one of the reasons that uh, biblical scholars are pretty sure about that is that in one of his letters, I think it's Galatians, if I remember correctly off the top of my head, yeah, one of the lines in there is, you can tell I'm writing this on my own now because the letters got so much larger. Paul was literate, and he could, but he, you know, he didn't write in small, perfect letters that would fit onto, in a, in a good, proper letter to send out to someone. Um, things got too big and took up too much space. Um, you needed, for lack of a better word, a professional scribe to make all of that work. Uh, that's one of the ways that scribes in that day and age made their living is that people came to them and asked them to write letters that they would dictate so that they, those could be sent. Um, and that's what Paul did for the most part. Um, the other part of that is that most likely, although no one can say for sure, because none of the original letters survive, it, everything we have of Paul's letters as well as the Gospels is about 100 or 200 years older um, having been transcribed over and over again. But uh, at that time, one of the, way, the most common ways of writing things was on a wax tablet with a stick, so it's sort of etching the letters into the wax. Um, it was, for lack of a better way of putting it, cheaper than making use of parchment or paper and ink. So you can imagine those were not cheap items easily found in the Mediterranean at that time, but a wax tablet that you could etch into. And then when it was done, wipe it clean and start over again from scratch. You could so over, use it over and over and over again. So that's just a little bit of it. So also that would mean that a scribe 
would have visited Paul in jail, if we presume that this was an actual letter that was written, sent from Paul to Timothy. And there is some debate as to whether or not it was actually Paul's words, or it was written later on in the tradition and honoring all that Paul had taught and using his name to give it more emphasis and importance. That happened with a few of the other later letters that are named in Paul, for Paul. In any case, today's scripture comes from what is considered Paul's second letter to his beloved student and follower, Timothy. And it's viewed as Paul's final letter just prior to his death. And the contents of the letter is Paul's encouragement for Timothy to carry on his legacy of living and teaching the good news of Jesus. As I said, there is some debate as to whether the letter was truly written by Paul or, transcri- or dictated by Paul or was written in his name as a way of honoring and adding to the apostles' impressive legacy. That was a tradition not just in Christian circles but throughout the Mediterranean world. Make use of someone who was an important historical figure, keeping on their legacy and building on it. Within this context, it is seen as coming from someone who is facing his death, most likely from execution, and he sits in a prison condemned to be killed by the state. And he is addressing concerns about how we live on in Christ's grace and love how what we do here matters. That despite our physical weakness and the powerlessness of the community to which we belong, we still find honor and promise and strength in our faith in God. And Paul speaks of the gift of the gospel, of our faith in Christ's good news. What does that, what does the writer of Timothy mean when he speaks of the gospel. Are they referring to the first four books of the New Testament, what we call the gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? No. Depending upon when 2 Timothy was written, some of the gospels had yet to be written, or at the least, the various writings that became the New Testament were still being gathered and selected as canon. So, That probably wasn't going through Paul's mind, at least. No, the gospel being referred to here is not those writings, but the overarching message of the life and teaching and the death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. It is the message of God's all-encompassing and never-ending love. It is the message of God's promise of new life, of new opportunities, And it is the faith we have in the good news, that gospel, that we are told here is a treasure. Our faith in God's love, our faith in the grace of God and the promise of never-ending life, that through Christ, God has defeated death, that is a treasure. How is this a treasure? Especially when we who, that when who we presume was Paul wrote these words from prison. How is this a treasure, this faith? How is this faith a treasure when so many of the early followers were pe- persecuted by the authorities? In particular, the empire. Where is the treasure in all of this? Well, after my reflections this past week and some prayer. Here's what I think. I think it is the hope that comes with the assurance of God's love and the promise of something new. It is hope. Hope of a new life, of new opportunities. The hope of a new world that provides justice and peace for those who have rarely and possibly never experienced those things. It is the hope that 
God is with us and stands with us in the face of violence and betrayal. Consider who many of Christ's early followers were. The poor, the laborers, the slaves, fisher people, women who had little voice, little and very few choices in their regular life. But here they had the choice to follow this rabbi, Jesus. There was a promise of something new. And so it is the hope that no matter what we have done, this also is in it, no matter what we have done, who we have been, the choices we have made, We can change, and we will be loved by a God of mercy and justice. That also enters into it. The promise, the hope, that what we have been in the past, how we have been seen, how we have been treated in our past, that does not have to be what comes tomorrow. God promises us that we are not trapped by our choices. We are not held to who we once were. We can be someone new, and we will be forgiven and received by this loving God. We are free to be transformed into the people God envisions for us. Our faith gives us hope of transformation. You see, faith is not merely a verbal or intellectual acknowledgement or statement of what we believe. It is more than declaring our love of or trust in God. Faith is an active thing. Through our trust in or loyalty to God, we are moved to take action. We are inspired to live out that faith. How are we inspired to live in relationship with the world around us? How does our faith in God influence our choices and our decisions on how to live in God's world? Paul seems to know that Timothy is struggling with his ministry, that he is experiencing fear and uncertainty of how to stand up and be heard in the face of other voices that seem louder and more forceful. And yet, Paul encourages Timothy to make his voice heard, to be confident in his words and actions. To paraphrase Paul, ours is not a faith of timidity. Even as we face louder, more powerful, what seem to be more powerful voices, more powerful opinions and attitudes. Hold on to what you have heard, what you have learned, what you've experienced, what God tells you about about your place in this world. So let our hope of what this world can be what we can be a part of, what we can be a part of building. May that move us. And let us not be ashamed of our faith and how we are called to love one another. God calls us to make a difference in the world and to move into the world without shame and overcoming our fear. And by doing so, Be assured that we will be seen and heard and honored. Thanks be to God. Amen. Do we have a ministry of music? Okay. Let us take a time for reflection as uh, 
this offering from you, Gail. take time to uh, receive our offering and to uh, ask God's blessing upon it. So let us join in. Oh, I've got an invitation for the offering this morning. I forgot about that. God has given us good gifts. The gift of life, the gift of love, the gift of mercy, the gift of this good earth, our home. The gift of teachers, the gift of presence, the gift of people to love, the gift of a call to serve, and the gift of hope for the future of God's world. God has given us good gifts. Let us return for God's use a portion of what God has given us to further God's purposes in the world. So I invite you to stand as you are able and join in the singing of Praise God from Amal God. Blessings flow. Holy One, may our hearts be attentive to your voice. Open our eyes to the needs of the world. Strengthen in us the mission and the spirit of this faith community. Accept and use this offering towards furthering the reality of your realm on earth. Through Jesus the Christ, amen. Please be seated. As we prepare for this time of communion, I'd like to offer this, um, this word, that as we have read in scripture and heard in song, Jesus invites all to join him in the feast. And Jesus calls on us to do likewise, to invite all, regardless of where you come from, where you are in your life, 
where you are in your journey to join us around this table. And so I offer this invitation to all of you, regardless of where you are, regardless of where you are in your journey, in your relationship with the world around you and with God, you are invited and welcome to be part of this feast, this holy meal. To make sure everyone knows, we have with us and uh, you received at the, at, when you entered the sanctuary today uh, a baggie with a cube of bread and our organic juice container. <laughs> the grape. And so, when we get to the part or the distribution of our elements, I will, I will offer words of institution and we will join together at the same time in eating that piece of bread. And then, in lieu of drinking from the cup, we will all take, join together in the eating of our grape for, the, for that. As I said, today is World Communion Sunday, and so let us pray. One world spinning freely, yet too often fractured and confined. We too often find ourselves broken, alone, feeling powerless. Remind us of the words written long ago to Timothy, encouraging him to rekindle his faith. Spark your fire within us, the fire that energizes and renews and brings new life to us and the world. As a Samaritan paused to give Jesus thanks, so we gather on this day people from around the world to celebrate Christ's presence in our midst. We use bread from our culture, as others use bread from their culture, as a potent symbol that you, our God, are the God of all people, that your love reaches not only us, but others besides. Open us to listen to them. Open us to learn from them. Open us to be present for them, not in patronizing and colonial ways, but in loving, equal, and Christ-like ways. This day we take communion with all the world, and in so doing declare that Christ is present for all people, challenging unjust systems with God's challenge and promise. As we break bread and share a cup, may we remember the Christ present with us through, through all these years and across all this world, present with us as we re rededicate ourselves to you. Amen. The Holy One is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is indeed good and right to give you thanks and praise, O God of many names. You made a covenant with Noah and caused nations in their amazing diversity to spread over the face of the earth. As of old, you led your people out of a land of enslavement to a land of promise. So too, you led our ancestors and some among us into new lands of possibility, there to find you anew. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, in every aspect human, as we are. He grew up in a small town in Galilee, far from the seat of religious and civil power. He spoke with a distinct accent. He learned of the breadth of your grace from a Gentile mother. Beside Jacob's well, he was moved by an encounter with a minority woman and disclosed his messianic identity. Therefore, with these and our other ancestors in the faith, both named and unnamed, who through the ages and all over the world have borne courageous witness to the hope within them, we praise you, singing or saying, Holy, Holy, Holy God, power of life and love. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna through the ages. Blessed is the one who comes. On the last night he spent with his friends, Jesus took an age-old tradition of his people and transformed it into something new. He took bread, staple food of his land, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to those around him, saying, Take. Eat, 
This is my body, broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine, come and drink of his people. And gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood. Each time you do this, remember me. By remembering Jesus in this way, now we claim our common heritage as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send, O covenant God, your Holy Spirit upon us and what we do here, that we and these gifts empowered by your Spirit may become signs of shalom to one another and to all peoples of the earth. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, everywhere, now, and forever. Amen. Loving God, we bring to you our prayers of concern. And for this privilege, we also give thanks. And we pray, God of steadfast love, our faith was born in ancient prisons, kindled, kindled from ashes, sustained amidst mourning, and passed to us to light our paths. We recall with tears and joy the ones in whom our faith first lived. And we lay, name them now in our hearts. This is their testimony that your love is unceasing. Your mercies are new every morning and you are the portion for those who wait for you. We recall their testimony with tears and joy. And we pause for a silent remembrance. God of steadfast love, write our lives as living love letters to those who will come after us, just as our mothers and our fathers in the faith pass love letters of their lives to us. God of compassion and God of healing, we offer our prayers now for those who are ill, those who are in pain, those who are so too often unheard or silenced, and those who are alone or lonely, those who grieve, and those who mourn. And in particular, today we offer our prayers for those who are recovering. from the destruction of Hurricane Ian. Those who are still recovering from flooding in Pakistan. And those who are struggling with the oppression to be experienced in Iran. And those continuing to struggle and live with the pain and the loss and the fear and the war of, inv of invasion in Ukraine. And so we gather these and all our prayers, thankful that we may turn to you as to our mother who loves us, as we say the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread now. And the body of Christ, given for you,
And I should have mentioned at the beginning, in case anyone was wondering, that bread is gluten-free, correct, Joey? Gluten to end? So that it, uh, it should be safe for, for all people. My hope. <laughs> and then we take our grape. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us join in prayer once more at following our communion. Life-giving God, may we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring new life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and all creation will live to praise your name. Amen. We come towards the end of our service, and so let us join in song once more as we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's number 288 in <coughs> Voices United, if you wish to read it from there. But I think we're just waiting. We've got the music.
come to the end of today's worship. I thank you for being a part of it. I thank you for joining me in this time of song, of prayer, of reflection. And I uh, bid you go forth, knowing that God walks with you, strengthening you, comforting you, and guiding you on your way. And so I offer this blessing and uh, to, uh, to need you to uh, join me in it. Go forth in the promise of God's steadfast love. We go forth in the promise of God's new mercies. Go forth as bearers of faith, ancient and new. We go forth with the kindled faith of our forebears. May your paths shine with light and love. Amen. Now let us join in our choral response. Take up his song. coming. Next Sunday being Thanksgiving, we are asking, we're putting out uh, boxes here for a food drive for the food bank. And as Warner mentioned with the children's story, uh, with the Thanksgiving Sunday and our way of showing thanks would be to bring food to help to others in need. So, and if you're not going to be here next Sunday, perhaps you could take something, keep the food bank in mind and take it directly to the food bank. Thank you. And please join us join in our time of fellowship in the L.A. Hall as part of worship. Joanne and Donna have put together some stuff, so please partake of it. Thank you very much, everyone. 